Judge, did you put our special instruction in? I didn't see the pres the presence and companionship with the perpetrator. Yes, that's in. Okay, yes. thank you. I just want to make sure I didn't get a chance. This, to okay. this counts in between the next to the last and last. Okay, I didn't, I didn't want to argue if you didn't put it in there. And I'll, I'm going to review it while argument is going on. While I have it before me. Let me just check it right now while the jury's coming in. Yes, thank you. Your Honor, please, uh, we may just want to present to the jury to place this in the context so they know what's going on. Right. Well, you want to do it? I'll do it. Well, I don't think I can speak to the jury. You can. Right. It's not. I'll do it. Judge, we do need a copy of, of the court's final uh, instruction. Please be seated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the state has rested. It is now the defense turn. And in this particular case, what, what's going to happen now is that uh, during the course of the trial, we had a jury out hearing where one of the witnesses, Juliana Martell, testified under oath. And her testimony under oath while you were out will be read into the record before you. So you will be able to take into account that particular testimony, okay? All right, are we ready? Is my witness? Yes, Miss, uh, come around to the other side, to the witness stand, please, ma'am. You don't look very happy. I am excited to be with this judge. All right, all right. Stop me for a firm testimony about to give. We have all the truth, so that you got it. I do. And Ms. Halstead is playing the part of Ms. Martell, all right? City Comfort, Ms. Halstead, this is my first time doing this too, so. Would you state your name, please? Beth Halstead, or did I do Juliana Martell? Sorry, Juliana Martell. And Ms. Martell, we were talking earlier you remember being interviewed by Detective Zicola? Wait, I'm lost. <laughs> y yes, sir. And this was back in July of 2013? Yes, sir. And you told Detective Zicola for the blue drink? Yes. That's all the questions I have, Judge. All right. And I'm sorry, but that's what the transcript says. And shall I read General Thurman's part, or does he want you to? No, he will read. Okay. I will. <laughs> you recall right after that you said, I'm not sure that's what she said. Right. Yes, sir. Is that still true? You're not sure what she said? So, from what I know, is I never saw the drink being purchased, and I never saw it being. Okay. And so that was what she said, from what I remember, okay. but I never. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I said, okay. <laughs> now the answer. And so that was what she said, from what I remember, but I never saw what happened. I'm telling the truth. Well, is it true you told investigators? And it was loud at 1.30 in the morning at the tin roof. Yes, there's lots of loud music there. I don't know what we do with the court part. Just skip that. Let me see. Just read. Well, 
Hold up just a second. For clarification, General, you said that you thought you heard the alleged victim handed her the drink. No, did you? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. If I say it. Okay. Okay. You, I think. If I said that, uh, my question was after you said that you had. A yes. It was loud in there. Yes. Could she have said that this Angie woman bought her a drink? Mr. Reagan. Read your partner. And I object. Uh, what when could she is speculation. All right, rephrase. Or could she have said? Uh, Your Honor, again, we object to could and speculation. Your Honor, please, she's saying she's not sure that's what she said, and I think I should be able to ask her. I'm not asserting for the truth of the matter. It's just suggesting it's possible she used other things besides handed. And the court says, all right. And again, if he's asking, is it possible, he's asking her to speculate, Your Honor. The court, well, she said that she wasn't sure, so he has to get to the crux of the matter some kind of way, so I will allow him to ask. And that's your answer for Ms. Martell now, instead of the court. Me? Yes. Oh, sorry. It could be possible. I guess I wasn't completely 100% sure. It's been how long now? Almost three years? It's been about three years, yes. It's possible she could have said she handed her another drink other than the blue drink. It's possible, yes. So it's fair to say, based on your testimony, you don't really recall a conversation very well. Right. I remember the gist of what happened and kind of what was being said, but I don't remember the wording used or how it was said, and I guess what time and that sort of thing. Okay. You've been told by other people about the Angie, this Angie person buying drinks. We'd heard about Angie before this night happened. That's all the questions I have. Then you said, you said a whole bunch. Line, line 18, Judge. Okay, Mr. Reagan. Uh, can I have just a moment, Judge? All right. Now, well, page seven, is that pretty well? Yes. Ms. Martell, do you remember telling Mr. Zicola, this was about like I had seen her there, it was like a while after being there, I saw her with a drink and it was like, I think it was blue, and I was like, that's a cool like color, like what is that? And she was like, I don't know, um, Angie gave it to me. Do you remember telling Mr. Zicola that? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, that's all the questions I have. You say anything further and then General Thurman comes up. All right, anything further. And right after that, you said, I'm not sure that's what she said. Is that true? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Then you say anything else and Mr. Reagan says one second. And that's it. And then I have no further questions. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, any other witnesses for the defense? 